Don't look under the internet. <laughs> hey, somebody has to take over, right? <laughs> somebody does have to take over. And that somebody who is taking over is me, Morgan Cleveland. Welcome <laughs> to Don't Look Under the Internet. I'm so happy you're here, Morgan. I'm so I am, happy. I am, in fact, Morgan Cleveland, and that's Doug. <laughs> hey, everybody. And that is Jason. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> Before we get into the episode today, we should probably do some Deludy housekeeping. Clap above your head. You know, you... <laughs> Clap, Existence. Clapping indeed. <laughs> so, this week, we have two very special patrons to shout out. The first one is St. Thickalus. Oh, Thank you, yeah, St. Saint Saint Nicholas. Nicholas. Morgan Freeman thanks you for your patronage. The other one that we have to shout out is the Chocolate Rain Man himself. Not Tezande, but Zay. Zezande. <laughs> Zezande. <laughs> Thank you, Zay. Thank you for coming back to the Patreon. And Chocolate I'll... Rain. And now I am done doing this voice. <laughs> How's your, Welcome how's to Don't Look Under the Internet. Everybody. Welcome, Welcome now, everybody. switch over to the Vegeta voice. <laughs> <laughs> this is a podcast of just, this episode is just only cameos of really shittily done voices, except for Matt and Doug. So really just me. Welcome. That would be fun. Yeah, it would Jason's be fun. just yeah. always Jamaican, I think it is. It, or... it, it evolves to Jamaican. I actually think it falls back to my, like, I used to have a slight Kamanian accent, but <laughs> it's long gone. So I think my brain's just like, go to your safe zone. Just go to your safe space. Uh, uh. Speaking of cameos, you know who you don't want making a cameo in your email inbox anytime oh, soon? Mike is here again. Jesus, what the fuck? <laughs> who you what? probably want, wouldn't want a cameo from a picture of a dog. <laughs> but not just any dog. <laughs> How, how much right. do they charge for their cameos? <laughs> Today we've got Smile Dog. Poof. That everybody's favorite internet dog image. It's it is an internet is dog it? image. It's <laughs> that was a rough bird scooter, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm that working was... on it, man. I'm trying. I'm not even prepared anymore. I've forgotten everything I knew about the topic. <laughs> I will say you've already reached and then surpassed Mike levels of bird scooter. So, Mike, if you're listening to this, we love you. You can never be replaced. But, Matt, you've replaced Mike. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. If I can dial up the cringe to previously unachieved levels, I'm doing my job correctly. Perfect. Well, I think we're going to hit those levels later in the episode. But we, we first sh off, we should we should <laughs> cheer. We should cheers. I don't. We didn't. Did we cheers yet? No, we haven't. No, cheers. we haven't done let's, the, let's the do that. toast and drink. Oops. Oh, I also didn't say if you go to the Patreon, you can give us something, or you can go fuck yourself. Yeah, hell yeah, I'm so about the new the new uh, telling people to go fuck themselves idea. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just tell everyone who in, like vests interest in us to go fuck themselves and see how that that works out for us. People respond well to being bullied. I think so. <laughs> yeah. Holy shit, Doug! Holy shit! <laughs> You had you couldn't have saved that for like twenty five <laughs> minutes. Come on, I man! I, I saw I saw the window and I, I pulled it through. God so, damn it! Um, all right, everybody. Uh, when you hear the <laughs> dink, uh, clink and sink it. We didn't even say what we were drinking. Oh, it yeah, doesn't matter. They know. <laughs> they yeah. know by now. It's fucking death water. A <laughs> bottle of fucking four roses and whatever. Crappy IPA Jason has. Oh, it's, it's not an IPA. Wow. I, I actually Sunday? don't. I don't like IPAs. <laughs> yeah, I don't either. That's fair. I'm not about the hops. Yeah, I used to like them, but then they, you know, made ninety four thousand of them, and now it's all you can find anywhere. But yeah. cheers, everybody. I, it's, it bothers, it's so annoying when you go to the liquor store and like the whole beer aisle is beers that are like hop explosion nuclear warhead. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Real I love quick, the ones do you guys. Oh, do you guys like fucking Ecto Cooler? Oh my I god. 
I like forgot about Ecto Cooler. High C Ecto Cooler. High C Ecto Cooler from when the Ghostbusters came out. There, we found a a beer that is literally called Ecto Cooler, and it's a malt, and it is literally just Ecto Cooler, and it's, it's just fucking alcoholic? delicious. Yeah. Okay. It's awesome. If, huh. if this is gonna be like that time that I bought the Tall Boy can of the like Mountain Dew Hard, like the alcoholic Mountain Dew, <laughs> I don't want any fucking part of it. No, that is garbage. Oh, that yeah. sounded great, and then I heard it was terrible. I, didn't try. <laughs> well, I just wanted an alcoholic Baja Blast, all right? That's, dude, that's it. That's all I wanted. I, I love Baja Blast, so I'm like, it has to be good with, you know, alcohol in it. Nope. Nope. <laughs> well, you know what you shouldn't give alcoholic Mountain Dew to? To fucking dogs. Your dog. A picture of a dog. A pic- you should have- <laughs> guys, 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 yeah. hear me yeah. out. Yeah. Do you want to know what Smile Dog is? I would love to hear what the fuck we're talking about. We've been talking about booze a lot, and then there was a mention of an image of a dog. Yeah, and that's that's what it is. Oh. It's wow, a cool. JPEG of a dog that's supposedly been floating around since 1992, all right? And this Ooh. thing is a scan of a Polaroid that has a Siberian Husky in it with a wide human-like grin with almost like human teeth um but in the bottom corner of this image there is a very teeth. they should give him back <laughs> give him to give him to mike <laughs> give him like the teeth back um but yeah there's a a red stretched hand that's kind of hard to see almost um that looks like it's almost trying to like reach out of the photo and uh you know what i have to ask hmm. whose hand that be Stand, do that. Man. That is a, that, that is the be, question, indeed. Uh, but that is the you know give or take uh, TLDR of what Smile Dog is. So that sounds yeah. really really fucking simple. Like why why are we talking about this? I don't know, Jason. Do you know why we're talking about this? You know, Can I you give us I, the story so far. <laughs> I you know I think I remember there being a story going along with this super. You know what, I'm going to go ahead and call it an uncanny, maybe a little bit of a creepy image. Um, it, I mean, it definitely is, it's unsettling, for sure. But the story that goes along with it is way, way, way more unsettling. Um, so the story of Smile Dog is actually a pretty famous internet um, story that you could have found all over the place. I think it was like between 2007, 2008. Um, the story itself uses a ton of dates all over the place, so... Bear with me, I apologize. I've been on Benadryl the last two days, some cold meds, so if my head's all fucked up. Sorry, have you bear seen, with me. Have you seen the hat man yet? Oh, dude, that's why, I, that's why I'm scared to take the Benadryl. It's because I owe the hat man money, and I just don't have it. Is that Ben himself? Oh, my God. All right, no, we're he's doing a, an he's a drill. On... <laughs> it's, it's... Yeah, that is Ben, and it is time for the drill. It's... Do, do not is panic. The... It is just a drill. <laughs> it is this just is Ben's drill. drill. Uh, not not a sponsor. <laughs> we are not sponsored by Ben's Drill. Uh, <laughs> God, right? The Benadryl's taking over. What am I talking about? What's the story behind the Smile Dog? Jason? Story behind Smile Dog. Uh, it was circulating like 2007, 2008 ish, um, and it it freaked a lot of fucking people out, and I understand why. So here's kind of the long or the short of what the story of Smile Dog is. So Smile Dog is a story about uh, this amateur story writer who is in college and they're gathering information about something called Smile.jpg. Um, he'd arranged an interview with somebody named Mary E., who apparently was the systems operator for a small online bulletin board that hosted the aforementioned image back in, like, 1992. Uh, um, how much you want to bet that bulletin board was used that? Probably. How much you want to fucking bet that that's what they're talking was- about? Yeah, it was supposed to be like a local bulletin board for the Chicago area. Oh, you're right. Yeah, 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 that's right. So, yeah, so thank you for bringing that up. Mary E. was actually a systems operator based in Chicago, and that's right. The story does say it was for a very small bulletin board, so I don't think it was Usenet. You think it was um, called Chi- China? China? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Sure. <laughs> or Mediacom. Sweet. Sweet. Thanks. Thanks for the confirmation that that was that was. You know, I... I Dang. thought that you could use a, a win for the day, Doug, and that's your I one really, win. I really did. I needed a win. <laughs> that's your one win for the day. Um, so, according to whoever's telling us this, um, 
It wasn't until about 2005 that Smile.jpg was actually brought to their attention. So that means about 13 years had gone by between like the first instance of Smile Dog or Smile.jpg and the person who's informing a, us of all of this in 2005. That's a fucking eternity on the internet. It really fucking dude, like 2 months is an eternity on the internet. This is 13 fucking years. Like how did this survive? It's ancient history. Yeah. Um and one of the, so one of the reasons that the, the person telling the story set up an interview with Mary E is because apparently Mary was the most cited victim cited victim remember that wording to be affected by what is called smile dog normally people aren't who look at pictures aren't then labeled victims <laughs> just saying so when when we say smile dog obviously we're referring to the dog in the picture that is called smile.jpg um the reason I make that differentiation, you know, I'm going to get that in just a second. Let's go back to Mary. So apparently a few days before the interview that this guy set up, Mary had locked herself in her room and her husband ends up canceling the interview interview on her behalf, but not before allowing them to listen. So this guy, he showed up to their house and she was barricaded in her room and he could hear crying sounds. And the husband was like trying to calm her down. And he eventually came out and said, you know what? This isn't going to work. Sorry. Um, but he did get to hear some of the crazed sobbing noises coming from inside the room. Now, the legend of Smile Dog says that the image itself can't be found anywhere online. However, there are countless de depictions of what people think it might look like. Um, there are unverified rumors of Smile.jpg showing up in the early days of Usenet, and even one persistent tale that in 2002... Uh, a hacker flooded the forums of the, uh, I'm sure you, we've used something awful before. We've referenced that. So they flooded the, that site with just a deluge of smile dog pictures. Um, good move. it really is considering it rendered about half the forums users at the time epileptic. It's kind of a big, yeah. It seems so, like something you would have heard about. You know, mass epilepsy based <laughs> on the picture of a, a smiling dog. I feel like I would have, you know, been warned. I That's hope why I we're covering worms. it now. Yeah, so this consider this <laughs> consider this about oh I don't know twenty one years after the creation of the image. This is your formal warning from oh, okay. the Deludi members. So don't I look at the image. Myself back in the past. Also, yeah, exactly. Make sure you go forward, listen to this, and then go back. But also, I'm sending the image uh, to all our socials. So please yeah, check make sure that, out. that this is th make sure that image is like the image that is the front of everything. Absolutely. Uh -huh. Um, we gotta spread the word somehow. You're welcome. Um, so you said that thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, so as I said, this rendered about half the forum's users epileptic. How the fuck does that happen? Apparently, everybody who sees Smile.jpg are affected by something in some way. Some people differently. Some people have epileptic seizures. Some people go insane. Um, but the most, the end result for all the people who experience smile dog is suicide hundred percent of the time. Um, and everybody who sees this picture, they describe it the same way. And it's, it's almost the same wording as well. And they say a dog like creature, um, usually, is, uh, they either say like Siber smiling Siberian Husky or smiling, like some kind of large dog or wolf sometimes, but it's usually Siberian Husky illuminated by the flash of a camera sits in a dim room. The only background detail uh, that is visible being a human hand extending from the darkness near the left side of the frame. The hand is empty, but it's usually described as beckoning. Um, now, obviously most attention is given to the dog because you know, you can fucking see it or I guess dog creature as some people might say. Um, the weirdest part about this dog is that the the like it's 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 jaws its muzzle is like split in this huge grin revealing not great teeth <coughs> british teeth if i'm being honest um wow. it's just it's real fucking creepy i don't appreciate it, that <laughs> Thank you, George Harrison. I'm so sorry. I forgot you were here. Guest starring on the episode. I will be more sensitive to your heritage. Um, but yeah, so weird ass teeth. It's almost like it's got human teeth and it's 
Its mouth is too big for its face. Um, it's just it's just very uncanny looking. So after the failed interview attempt in 2007, uh, we're going to go ahead and call this person Mr. L, because that's at the end of all of this. That's how he addresses himself. He says, Mr. L, um, he tried to talk. <laughs> I fucking hope so. That would be incredible. Um, they tried talking with experts in the fields of folklore and urban legends, but to no avail. And after about a month of doing this, um, it's so at this point in time, it's March of 2008. And in March, Mary E. wrote him an email. And this is how it reads. Dear Mr. L, I'm incredibly sorry about my behavior last summer when you came to interview me. I hope you understand that it was at no fault of yours, but rather my own problems that led me to act out as I did. I realized that I could have handled the situation more decorously. However, I hope you will forgive me. At the time, I was afraid. You see, for 15 years, I have been haunted by Smile.jpg. Smile Dog comes to me in my sleep every night. I know that sounds silly, but it is true. There is an ineffable quality about my dreams, my nightmares, that make them completely unlike any real dreams I have ever had. I do not move and do not speak. I simply look ahead, and the only thing ahead of me is the scene from that horrible picture. I see the beckoning hand, and I see Smile Dog. It talks to me. It's not a dog, of course, though I am not quite sure what it really is. It tells me it will leave me alone if only I do as it asks. All I must do, it says, is, quote-unquote, spread the word. That's how it phrases its demands. I know exactly what it means. It wants me to show it to someone else. And I could. The week after my incident, I received in the mail a manila envelope with no return address. Inside was a three-and-a-half-inch floppy disk. Without having to check, I knew exactly what was on it. Thought for a long time about my options. I could show it to a stranger, a coworker. I could even show it to Terrence. Terrence is the Mary's husband. Um, fucking but, Terrence. Fucking Terrence. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's his brother. <coughs> it's um, a smile dog. See. <laughs> <laughs> um. So I could show it to Terrence. As much as the idea disgusted me, and what would happen then? Well, if Smile Dog kept its word, I could sleep. Yet, if it lied, what would I do? And who is to say something worse would not come for me after I did as the creature asked? So I did nothing for 15 years. Though I kept the diskette hidden among my things. Every night for 15 years, Smile Dog has come to me in my sleep and demanded that I spread the word. For 15 years, I have stood strong, but there have been hard times. Many of my fellow victims on the BBS board, where I first encountered Smile.jpg, Stop posting. I heard some of them committed suicide. <coughs> Fuck. <coughs> My throat is dry as hell. Big booty slut board. <clears throat> I fucking ooh. I actually didn't look Wait, up. Wait, you're the... you're a part of that too, Matt? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's still running. Right. <coughs> Whoo! All right. Others remain completely silent, simply disappearing off the face of the web. They're the ones I worry about the most. I sincerely hope you will forgive me, Mr. L, but last summer when you contacted me and my husband about an interview, I was near the breaking point. I decided I was going to give you the floppy disk. I didn't care if Smile Dog was lying or not. I wanted it to end. You were a stranger, someone I had no connection with, and I thought I would not feel sorrow when you took the diskette as a part of your research and sealed your fate. Before you arrived, I realized what I was doing. <laughs> Before you arrived, I realized what I was doing. I was plotting to ruin your life, and I could not stand the thought. And in fact, I still cannot. I'm ashamed, Mr. L, and I hope this warning will dissuade you from further investigation of Smile.jpg. You may in time encounter someone who is, if not weaker than I, then wholly more depraved, someone who will not hesitate to follow Smile Dog's orders. Stop while you are still whole. Sincerely, Mary E. Um... So that's heavy as fuck. 15 years of this dog saying, spread the word, show somebody else, and you get to sleep. Um, so a month later, we learn through Terrence that Mary has actually killed herself. That's the only piece of, <clears throat> that's the only little little tidbit that he gets from her before she decides to go through with it. Oh, um, trigger warning. Yeah, so if you guys <laughs> were wondering. Yeah, <laughs> damn it. Go back and don't listen to this. <laughs> Yeah, go back. Yeah, unlisten to what you just heard. Damn please. it. Yeah, we, I got you better about that. 
next time. Um, right. So uh, Terrence um, basically informs Mr. L that Mary's no longer around and he's been going through her things and he found the floppy disk with smile.jpg on it and he burned it. He describes the whole thing, the, uh, the sound that the thing makes is like an evil hiss. Um, at this point, Mr. L's very confused as to what to do. <coughs> a few months go by, and he gets another email from someone else, and it reads, Hello, I found your email address through a mailing list. Your profile said you are interested in Smile Dog. I have saw it. It is not as bad as everyone says I have sent it to you here. Just spreading the word. Smiley face. Uh, and attached to the email was a file... You guessed it, named smile.jpg. Um, Mr. L kind of starts considering his options. On one hand, it would sate his curiosities, but on the other, it might kill him. And he finally asks, could I spread the word in reference to, like, saving himself? By, like, if I see this and it fucks me, can I show it to someone else? And he goes, yep, I can do that. And that's the story. And then <coughs> attached is the picture. Oh, yeah. Smile.jpg. JPEG dot smiling. Yeah. So. It's actually just it's actually just the probe penis. <laughs> sure. That'll that that just means you get laid in, you know, thirty days or something. <laughs> I think that might be the dilutey version of smile S- <laughs> Spread the prober and you'll get laid in a month. <laughs> Spread the prober. <laughs> I, I hate that word. I hate all of that together. Yeah, it's not great. Um, is that your version of make? <laughs> uh, no, no. Uh, it's Ugh. it it's terrible, but I'm I'm all right. I'll live. I can I say my myself. make is mommy milkers. You kept saying mommy, mommy milk- milkers last week, and that <laughs> I think I think that one makes me uncomfortable. Like <laughs> oh yeah, I know what you're referencing. To. Yeah. Uh, but that's <laughs> now that we've heard the story or the alleged story slash origin of this image uh maybe we should dig into the actual like hard evidence that we have for the origin of this image and i'm gonna just tell you up front we don't have much no no so to see story we just told yeah (laughs) (laughs) basically lending a little bit of uh, credence to the actual story behind this Creepypasta, is that what you want to call this? Creepypasta slash email chain? Something like that. It's a pasta. It's a pasta. <laughs> Penis <So>. spaghetti. <laughs> yeah. Uh, when, yeah. Lending credence to the story behind this penis spaghetti um, is the fact that literally nobody actually knows exactly where this picture came from. This picture um, that is attached to the story that Jason just read is exactly what... Um, you would what it says it is. It's a picture of a husky or something with a human smile, um, sitting in a dark room with a window behind it, and there's a creepy hand in the corner. And um, the like, basically, the best guess that anybody has as to where this picture came from is the paranormal board on 4chan. Um, because that was sort of like the first place that people remember this popping up. But there's no screenshot or like any verifiable proof of like this is the original post. So, hell, maybe this picture did actually come from 1992. Who knows? Hmm. I would ask both of you, though, how do you feel when you look at this picture? Uh, I've seen a- better. <laughs> <Smash>. <laughs> Smash. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, to be fair, like, it, it makes me feel weird. <laughs> it made, I don't like the feelings it gives me. Yeah, I don't know. It reminds me, I can't put my finger on it, but it reminds me of a fucking commercial where they give all the babies, like, real oh. human teeth. And I cannot remember for the life of me what the product is, but it's like a, it's like a current <laughs> commercial. Oh, I don't um, know and that's, that's like all I can think of, and it's like stupid. I thought you were gonna <laughs> mention Puppy Monkey Baby. That's exactly what I was being uh, like. Are you sure you're not thinking of Puppy Monkey Baby? I, I mean, <laughs> maybe I haven't seen that in a puppy while. <laughs> that's puppy gonna. Monkey, I'm baby. gonna puppy literally. Monkey, that's all I'm saying puppy, at work tomorrow. 
<laughs> that's like that's like all I said for like a month straight after that commercial first day. Oh yeah. Oh, people were <coughs> so tired of it. Probably Genius marketing. Day. Annoying uh, as piss. But... <laughs> really. We need we need well, more Super Bowl commercials like that shit. Oh we yeah. Get some oh, dumb, just dumb random, stuff. random bullshit. I'd be down for it. But would either of you describe the feeling that you get when you look at this picture as uncanny? I would have to say, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I, I think that's probably how I feel about it too. So, um, for those of you who don't know what uncanny means, uh, uncanny is sort of the feeling that you get when you look at something, and it almost looks like what you think you should be looking at, but it's not quite right, and it just makes you feel a little not okay. This is like the um, the, stro- the stroke pictures that we were talking about not too long ago. Yeah, kind of like that. It just it like creates a sense of anxiety in you that you're not quite that you think you know what you're looking at, but it's just there's something off about it, and maybe you're doubting yourself. And a lot of r- research has actually been put into this because the biggest place where I see uh, uncanny stuff is definitely in animation and like 3D modeling and stuff like that, where you see like humanoid characters and it's like ooh that looks too real like if it's if it's fake enough it it's still a, okay a, a lot of the new like ai images that you see where yeah. like their teeth and fingers like aren't quite right give that yeah. feeling oh yeah 100% 100% um and like <clears throat> the best guess that anybody can actually come up with as to why this creates this sensation in people because it's almost a universal feeling is that like we are evolutionarily hardwired to pick up on certain social cues and things from people by just looking at them like certain unspoken like face face gestures and like movements and stuff that tell us like give us clues into what people are feeling and thinking and like the actual intention behind what they're saying and so the prevailing theory as to why this happens is like when somebody looks at something that is uncanny they that piece of their monkey brain starts operating and trying to figure out what they're looking at and like what the intentions of the humanoid creature that they're viewing are but the signals are mixed so like this there might be a smile but then like the eyebrows aren't moving right to match what the smile is doing yeah and and so like it just confuses your brain and just makes you upset and because like human beings response to not understanding something is often just fear oh yeah so uh it's theorized that this is the feeling that you get when you look at this picture because it's like that's a human teeth but it's attached to a dog face and it's its eyes look kind of sinister because of the flash from the picture and it's just like what's he up to (laughs) <laughs> he, he's plotting something. What's his plotting next move? Something. Yeah. What's uh, that dog doing? <laughs> so that's kind of the, the feeling and the rationale behind why when you look at this picture, it makes you so upset. Or it's just a fucking demon dog, like the story says. You, who knows? Who knows? Um, do we have any actual evidence, though, that this has caused any of the effects that are given in the story, the epileptic seizures or anything like that? Like actual evidence? Yeah. Um, I wouldn't call it reputable. <laughs> there, I mean, there's. I know when I was reading through, so both when I first found this fucking years ago, um, as well as again this week while doing some research for it, I remember seeing people who like kind of what I think is bandwagoning more or less. Like they mm. see someone's having a time, which Mister L clearly is having a fucking time. Um, And then they kind of affirm that by agreeing and reinforcing by saying that like, Oh, I've been through this too. Oh, I've been through this too. And so like, there's a lot of, there's, there's several people that say things like, like they confirm it personally, but not a hundred percent sure if there's like an actual, is there an actual like scientific study saying that this is a thing? No, I don't, I don't think so. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. At least not that I've seen. You know, I, was, I, I was like, wait, did, did he find something? <laughs> no, I didn't find anything. <laughs> Damn it, Matt. <laughs> you Got haven't gone to the archive of all the, you know, thousands of smile dog <laughs> theses that college kids are writing up? Well, 
Yeah, I mean, this thing doesn't even have a Wikipedia page. Right? No. Ha. Stupid. Apparently, does it even any exist? mention of this thing? Like, oh, that's the, right. The Wikipedia admins try to delete it immediately. That's part they of try the. Try to make a Wikipedia page. Yeah, they're being that's... eroded. Apparently that yes they are being yeah. eroded. It's apparently that's part of the story is that like someone tries to warn people about it without like showing a picture and somebody at Wikipedia immediately fucking tears it down. It's very strange. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so why are they covering it up? I mean there is no Wikipedia page. So what what's going on here? It's a good do fucking we want to give it, I mean I think we've covered it. Do we want to give it a real or fake? Yeah, let's do that. I'm game for that. I'm ready. My body is ready. Three. <laughs> two. Glad somebody did it. <laughs> One. Fake. Fake. Plausible. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. I'm giving... Okay. I don't so know I'm, why. I'm leaning on the side of fake, too, but I'm giving this plausible because out of all of the, like, crazy internet shit that we've covered, I'm not saying that I 100% believe that, like... All so, the epilepsy and stuff could have happened, but the this one I like the fact that we still don't know where the image came from or what yes. the image is. Nobody's I, I ever like been that, able yeah. to look at the picture and be like, "This is this dog from this photo, photoshopped with this hand together," and like, "This is this window," or "This is," or even "This is the original post from this." Music. Right? Yeah, you can't even produce and, it, and I like that, so I'm so, giving it credit. So I'm gonna pull a mic real quick. I'm gonna be like. Well, what is real or fake in this situation? And then I'm going to say something stupid like, oh, well, real is like it's real, and then fake is like it's fake. But then, just after we get past all of that, I'm going to say something along the lines of, I think the the story of it is fake, but I think the image could possibly be real for whatever reason okay. it is. If that makes sense. you know, No, yeah, right? yeah. Oh, maybe it's like I took this photo of my dog and it developed funky, and like I don't know why it looks like this. And now it's, I mean, it gave right. four, it gave four people in my family seizures. So now I'm gonna <laughs> fucking write and a story about. <laughs> and then half an office building in Chicago on accident. But uh... well, well, it's possible that like this photo was taken and like it was all fucked up looking. And then somebody emailed it to somebody and they were like, look at this fucked up photo of my dog that makes me really uncomfortable when I looked at it. <laughs> and then it got forwarded and it was like, look at this fucked up photo of this dog that makes me really uncomfortable. And the story just kind of spiraled and got exaggerated over time. It's like a game so, like, of fictional telephone. Yeah. If you created Smile Dog and you're listening to this, reach on out to us. Give us the inside scoop. That's yeah, all. They died from a seizure. <sighs> yeah, if you died I, from a seizure. Uh, ironic. Let us know if you died from a seizure while creating this image. Yeah. Hit us yeah, up reach out. I got yeah. my dousing rods downstairs. Yeah. We'll, we'll connect later. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, we're only, what, 30 minutes in? Yeah. Yeah. So you we have wanna... time for, for something else, yeah? Do we have a bonus topic? Yeah, we, got... we do, actually. We, we, have a, we have our plan B. Yes. Yeah. Yes, we do. Uh, speaking of old creepypasta shit mm -hmm. on the internet, this is We've a stable. Got a classic for you. Oh, yeah. A a fucking banger. Everybody a should know <laughs> what this is. Yeah. Doug, what are it's we talking about? We're what are talking we about to? a a man, a myth, a a pee pee pasta. The the Jeff the Killer. Jeff Probes the Killer. El El Jefe the Killer. <laughs> El Jefe. El Jefe. <laughs> 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 That's incorrect as fuck. That is, that El, is Heffy, fine. El Heffy the Sleepy Man. <laughs> My name Jeff. Um, <laughs> but yeah, we're doing yeah. we're doing Jeff, Jeff the, the Killer. Killer too tonight. Jeff the Killer. Um, some of you may know him from all the people on Tumblr who absolutely simped over this man in the early, well, mid two thousand, early twenty ten, early twenty eleven. Whatever you, you get, what I'm trying to say. Um, Time in the past. <laughs> yeah. A date that isn't today. Um, <laughs> Safest yeah, answer you got. <laughs> you've probably seen the image. Uh, so real quick, I'm going to go over who Jeff is and kind of what the iconic imagery is, okay? So uh, he is an adolescent serial killer and uh, most famous for his creepypasta. Uh, Jeffrey Woods, his real name, um, 
basically was disfigured after being set on fire while fighting a gang of bullies and lost his sanity after witnessing his new and beautiful face. Now, mm-hmm. if you were to look at this image, uh, the Oof. classic image of him... I wouldn't recommend uh, it. Yeah, you know what? Go ahead. Basically, <laughs> he's <laughs> a pale, pale white, like more pale than myself, um, with these really sunken black eye sockets uh, with no eyelids to uh, account for. And uh, he's got these piercing, beady fucking white eyes inside of the black socket uh but uh also very notably there is no nose there's no fucking nose and he's got kind of like a joker like grin on his face similar to the smile dog except it's like the grin is really like large and but his mouth be too small is for the grin would you say it's it, uncanny a little uncanny i'd say we've gone full circle jason um, and then, <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Matt. <laughs> and then, of course, he's got some like shoulder length black hair. But if you've seen the image, you know exactly what the fuck I'm talking about. Yep. Um, he is a disgust bug. So, uh, yeah, let's Gravity. let's let's talk a little bit more about the image, Jason. Yeah. Um. So a lot of people might be wondering where, like, what if you've seen the image, and I'm sure you have at one time in your life or another, like. Even I, You've probably I seen, seen a, the picture and don't even know what it's called. That's it. Yeah, that's exactly what happened to me. The first time I saw this, I saw it and I go, "Wow, that's fucked up." Anyway, and I just kept going. I didn't know that it had anything to do with any of this. And honestly, before researching this, like I knew of Jeff the Killer, but I didn't know a whole lot. I know a lot more now. Um, so this image, why this image? Like, where did this fucking image come from? Um, so for a long time. It was believed that the photograph was a Photoshop uh, of an image of somebody named Katie Robinson. And the story goes that this young girl, who was considered by some very terrible people to be overweight, um, was basically driven to suicide by online bullies. Not great. Um, but apparently her, uh, her image was then photoshopped and used as the basis for the most widely known Jeff the Killer image. Now, as poetic as that might be, considering the story that Doug kind of, uh, talked about. So just to give you just a, a little detail on that, essentially what happens is Jeff is, uh, at the bus stop with his brother, Lou, and these really edgy skateboarding bullies basically start picking on them, tell them that they have to pay them for bus fare. Well, long story short, Jeff ends up stabbing one of them, and then they run off, and the bullies come back, and they threaten to basically, like, ruin Jeff's life after his brother Lou was sent to juvie instead of Jeff for stabbing the kid. Um, Essentially, they show back up, and Jeff just goes fucking berserk. He talks about this feeling that he has inside, like, bubbling up, and how happy he was while he was beating the shit out of them. But the second time... It says that he has bleach poured on his face, and then he was set on fire, which, as Doug said, is where the hideous white skin, leathery skin comes from. Um, But he ends up killing all the bullies except for one. Um, And then, after this instance, he's taken to the hospital, and then after he removes the bandages, he sees his face, he fucking snaps, and he kills his family. Um... So, again, as poetic as the Katie Robinson theory might be, the fact that there was this girl who was bullied into suicide, um, is the image used for a story about a child who was bullied and then goes on a fucking murdering rampage? That claim is absolutely false. It's proven very false. I think it just lines up a little too well with the story. Um, But time and time again, people have said, like, nope, this isn't true. You can even look up the girl, Katie Robinson, and, like, her image, and, like, you can you can do some very basic legwork and see that that's not the case. Another theory is that the image is actually something called a trickle-down Photoshop image um, of a stick cam girl. Now, if you don't know what trickle-down Photoshop means, it's basically where, like, you post a picture, somebody else grabs it, photoshops it a little bit, reposts it, and then the chain keeps going and going and going until the image is... Utterly unrecognizable. So the theory here is that uh, there was a stick ham girl that apparently they were picking on and they would Photoshop the image slightly and repost, rinse and repeat until it was no longer recognizable. Um, but again, this has Jason, no real. 
what you just you just unlocked a memory I had uh, about E Bombs World. Oh uh, shit! <laughs> like oh, way fuck. back in the day, they used to have photoshop contests and then sometimes they would actually do those like i guess i don't know down. if they call them trickle downs or whatever but like a bunch yeah, of people would photoshop called. the same shit yeah and like the, the same one image and pass it around wow yeah Achieve, dude, achievement like, unlocked yeah absolutely when i looked that up like i thought about the days of you know e-bombs world or like trying to skirt school uh web blockers to get to e-bombs world <laughs> or something similar but yeah, they had those photoshops thing where you see like 30 images by the time you get to the end. You have no idea what the fuck you're looking at. So they uh, they thought that that might be the case here. Um, but again, there's no real way to prove that. Um, one of the earlier instances of the image was actually seen in a Japanese video that was published to YouTube on August 2nd, 2007. Um, I'm not even going to try to pronounce or think about how those are said out loud. Because I don't, you know, speak Mandarin or Chinese. Um, but it's apparently titled uh, Victims of Tomorrow, or part of an installment of something called Victims of Tomorrow. I'm not 100% sure. Victims of Tomorrow! <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's, it's apparently, this is just like this horror project. Um, and apparently it's a series, or in the series, there's a bunch of names and ages that are listed. After this... You see a the picture, like that iconic Jeff the Killer face, it appears for a split second, and there's text that says, Good night. Now, Jeff's like signature line is go to sleep. And so this might be like a precursor to that. Um But so far the farthest back that anyone has been able to trace the image is to a Japanese site called PYA.cc. And there were two versions of the image that were found. Both of both of the faces have no nose. Although one of them had like certain shading around the eyes and the area where the nose would be. Um, both of the images had different eye shapes and uh, one looks like one of them with the more cartoony eyes and one of them actually had more human eyes. Not going to lie. Human eyes one is a little bit more unsettling than the non human eyes one, which I didn't know was possible. But here we are. Um, but really, that's all I could find on that iconic Jeff the Killer image was those several things. There's really not a whole lot about it. Good thing yeah. there isn't like a, a girl version. Yeah, if there was a girl version, holy shit, we'd have a whole it's other also thing to cover. A good thing that people haven't taken this single image and short story that was uploaded to the internet and just fucking run with it. Oh, God, yeah. They, <laughs> they run with it so much. Uh, something about this just caught on. People really dug this story, and there's just oodles and oodles and oodles and oodles of fan fiction out there. There is no shortage. I bet you could start reading Jeff the Killer fanfic right now and Rule read 30, it until you're 34. dead. Um, oh, the, God. <laughs> there's so much fan fiction that people have actually invented another character that fits into this universe, and there's more fan fiction about her, and her name's Jane the Killer. And basically, there's different versions of her story, but the one that's like most widely accepted is that after Jeff the Killer went through his ordeal that he went through, he went around stabbing people and murdering people. And apparently he murdered this girl's family and then lit her on fire. And the lighting of her on fire left her just like horribly disfigured and um, like largely featureless the same way that Jeff is. And so now, because she's so pissed off about that, she goes around murdering people, envisioning that the people that she's murdering is Jeff, and she's trying to get back at him uh, mm. by murdering these people. And so she appears in this story, like this series of stories called Jeff the Killer versus Jane the Killer, and it's like a whole fucking alien versus predator thing. Yep. Now, um... <laughs> But uh, did they fetch a pail of water along the way? <coughs> Jack and Jane. It's not Jack oh. and Jill, Doug. Yeah, I was like, what the fuck? They fetched a bucket of piss. It was a bad joke. <laughs> fuck off. <laughs> but, uh, Your joke was a bucket of piss. I already got my one win in for the day, all right? You did. <laughs> well, speaking of pale, you know, Jeff is pale, <laughs> Jane is pale, but there is a third pale individual. 
that also is. somehow gets wrapped up into this mythos. There I'm is. not sure exactly how. I do. The fucking bird scooters tonight, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Discord already lit me up for my comment. <laughs> <Dude>. <laughs> my God. Um, but yes, there is another pale character who is incredibly famous on the internet that apparently is the sworn enemy of uh, Jeff the Killer. Um, you guys know a little, a little monster, a little cryptid, I don't know what to call him, named, uh, Slenderman. Um, I know. Jim I Slenderman? Too. <laughs> yes, Jim Slenderman. Um. Or wait, no, but, it's Saul, Saul Slenderman. Saul, yeah, That's... Saul Slenderman. Man, there right, you go. right, right. Spirit of Mike alive Better in all of us. <laughs> um, so apparently Jeff and Slenderman just fucking hate each other. Do you guys want to know why? Yes, please. Penis please. size. Ooh. Uh, the internet doesn't know. Okay. <laughs> yeah. They were just like, this is a famous character from a creepypasta. This is another famous character from a creepypasta. This... Let's make both, it And both characters have a large, large simping army for them. And it's like Batman versus Superman. Yes. Creepypasta version. Dude, the, so I don't get, I do... I cannot wrap my brain around this. Like, how do you have something so popular, especially like in fan art? How do you have so much fan art of Jeff the Killer versus Slenderman? And how do you talk about it that much? But not come up with a reason for why. <laughs> or how like, the, these universes connect. How they connect, why they hate each other, like what the fuck they have to do with each other. It's like, not the I, point, I, Jason. I, I, the point I guess is they not. They hate each other. And that's all we need to know, apparently. Um, but yeah, apparently it's this huge topic for debate online. You can go on to any, like, uh, Jeff or Slenderman-centric message boards, and you're going to find, like, six or seven arguments. Easy. Um, like I said, there's a fuckload of fan art, like, tons of it, but no one bothered to write, like, the story behind the fan art. And I don't know. To me, that's just... That sucks. <laughs> that just sucks. Um, you know what they did manage to write, though? What did they manage to write, Doug? A really, a really, I was about to, <laughs> uh, they, they wrote Multiple out his Multiple person... people who listen to this podcast have participated in the writing of this fan art. I guarantee it. Oh, guarantee you know, it. Oh, thousand you know percent. What? I'm glad you found something to occupy your time with. <laughs> yeah. Same so, here. They couldn't figure out why Slenderman and him had beef, but they were they they sure were able to give this man a a list of superpowers before, that were well. Balanced. Before you go into that, before you go into that, I got one more thing to say. I'm sorry. No. Um, so before we go into his act, like the the powers, the the supernatural powers of Jeff the Killer, <laughs> um, the the one thing I noticed when people were discussing like. A matchup like a Slenderman versus uh, Jeff the Killer. Nine times out of ten, the rules are basically made to inhibit some of Slenderman's powers to create a fair scenario. And I don't know, that would lead me to believe that Slenderman would have an absolute field day with Jeff's supple white ass, but I'm not yeah, an expert in it's that. It's like how well, you would have to un Superman Superman to make right. Him like in order that. to kill him, if you have to take away everything that makes him him, then you're not like you don't win. Like, I don't care who you are. You just don't. I don't know. But that's all I got on uh, on Jeff versus Slendy. Well, I guess uh, I guess it's up to the listeners now to determine who would win. <laughs> Although I'm not going to go over Slenderman's powers because that's for a different episode. Yeah. Um, Slenderman so, versus Jeff the Killer Creepypasta uh, it, March Madness. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We'll start Pretty there. sure it's also a porno. But um, all right. So... <laughs> Despite being the average human, uh, Jeff appears to wield uh, incredible supernatural abilities that only apply to his human attributes, which man is a whole ass human. Uh, so, you know, when you get lit on fire, it's similar <laughs> to being bit by a radioactive spider. Really? Yeah. So Hold you know on, what? Me, no, me, I'm not even gonna. Down. I was gonna. I was gonna suggest Spider my whole life to become Spider Man. I could have just lit myself on fire this whole time. Hey man, most yeah, of the guess. time you get bit by a spider and then you just you know die from like leukemia or something like ten years later. But <laughs> um, so yeah, <laughs> the leukemia spider. Yes, 
Native no, Brazil. Yeah, the, the, the leukemia spiders. Um, <laughs> what? <laughs> That's a radioactive spider. Yeah. It, it's radioactive. That's the yeah, yeah. You the get radioactive it, leukemia um, spiders, yes. Yeah, specifically, I don't know, the one from the all the commercials. But, uh, you know. <laughs> the uh, same one with the babies with the teeth. <laughs> oh, my God. Doug, I go want radioactive <laughs> leukemia spider versus puppy monkey baby. I think we have a That's bonus the episode. Write, write, this yeah, write, write this shit down. Write this shit down. We got to write this shit down. Mike, when you listen to this four years from now, write this down. Yeah. All right, anyways, where was I? So, despite being an average human, blah, 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 Jeff has some crazy abilities um, that only apply to his human attributes. The man is only human, so yeah, that he started seems his, redundant. He's a whole human. Whole ass human. Well, <laughs> sort of. Um, okay, so, he's got incredible strength, uh, he's stealthy, and he's got, like, supernatural speed, um, and he uses all this shit to just mercilessly slaughter his victims. Cool. Dope. Yeah. Great. But, He's incredibly durable as well. He's able to overcome his parents and his brother by just gutting them. <coughs> and then the one thing wow. that makes him stronger is his intense hatred and bloodlust. So the man is man's just, you know, real angry all the time. Um, and it, it also gives him some great stamina. So for all those ladies... Um, in recent no, he's years, giving me the vibes of like the weird kid at lunch who sits by himself who can just give you four quick facts. Matt, Matt, I hate to be I, that I, guy. I am that guy for sure. I, I think we're all that guy. I think that's why we're. Okay. I think that's why we're doing this podcast. Oh, all right. We've graduated. Uh, yeah. We have a podcast now. Yeah. Um, so, last thing I have is that uh, in recent years, uh, because there is a actual rewrite of this story, apparently, uh, yep. he has been depicted as being a charming individual, manipulating people into trusting him only to fucking kill them later. Um, yeah, so did every 70s and 80s serial killer that we've ever seen. Um, so, yeah, that is uh, all I have <laughs> Doug, on can you, that. Can you try to pretend to like this? I definitely <laughs> like this a lot. I will say the image is creepy. The, the image, image is very creepy. The image fucked me up for a bit when I was younger, that's for sure. See, that's the thing that fucks me up about what we do, is that I knew very little about Jeff the Killer, mm -hmm. and now I know too much about Jeff the Killer. <laughs> the worst part is, is there's not even that much information about him. There's really not. There is really not. Uh, I mean, honestly, this is like a staple creepy oh, pasta, yeah. right? Like yeah. this has a good history in uh, the things that we talk about. So that's awesome. The, yep. the image is awesome. I think the story is about forty minutes too long. But <laughs> and it only takes uh, other than that. To read it was fucking you know early creepy pasta shit. Like oh, yeah, not all creepy pastas are made the same. Um, and everybody likes what they like, so you know it yeah, is what it is. This laid the foundation for a lot of the great shit that's on our no sleep. Oh yeah, oh god yeah, so oh much thousand shit. percent. Yeah, this one might like. So this one might not be like a a favorite now, but that's simply because like I feel like this had to happen before a lot of the other shit that we see today. That's really re like the things that we rant and rave about. I think Jeff had to happen first. And that makes it a super important part of, like, creepy internet horror culture. I feel like I thought Jeff the Killer was older. Than Same. Me. I, I did, too. Is. I was thinking I, it was, like, like straight up, like, MySpace era internet. Yeah. I think I confused the image of Jeff the Killer with a lot of those, like, jump scares that people would send you on AIM back in the oh. day. Like, I remember that one maze game. Oh yeah, my god! It was like getting narrower and narrower and narrower, and then when you got to the end, the face would jump out and scream at you. Yep. Or yep, like yep. the fucking commercial the for the car. Yep. The car, yeah. The hill. <laughs> and then the zombie pops up. Yes. Yeah. That that image. If I see any commercial that starts with an image similar to that, I like my body goes into like PTSD yeah, mode. You're like <laughs> waiting. You're like, wait, what's gonna happen? What's gonna happen? Uh... It's like. It's like, Jason, this is a Hyundai commercial. What is wrong with you? No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> I've already shit my pants, so now it better scare me. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, like, Smile Dog reminds me of a lot of those email chains that you would get back in the day that are like, 
Oh, hell yeah. If you mm-hmm. don't forward this to like 10 people, your crush will die or you'll die in seven yep. days or whatever. Um, there was a lot of that sort of stuff. Oh, uh, yeah. I think there was actually, I think Je- the Jeff the Killer image was probably like the fucking subject of one of those at some point. It probably. had to be. 100%. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, and I-, I think a big part of like the two like things that we talked about today is, uh, you know, albeit they're a little bit older, I think younger me reading these would have enjoyed them quite a bit more mm-hmm. than the desensitized older me because like I'm I, I just nothing phases me anymore and it's it's worrying but it's also like this is what we do now well, and I, dude, all we... I do is watch fucking horror movies and yeah these things would have scared me when I was nine yeah sure. right yeah. right and I mean just you have to assume too like who knows how old the people were that wrote some of these things or like oh, made like some 13. of these things but you get what I'm trying to get at here I think the Jeff Jeff the Killer thing just feels really old it, it do. Really like does. I, like when I think of Jeff the Killer I think that it has to be from the same era as like Ted the Caterer, which is like yeah. 2001 yeah yep I don't know why but I think 70s and I think that's just like the aesthetic that the fucking picture has I don't know why when I was looking up other stuff for this, I was also reminded of, like, I started going down a rabbit hole of, like, like email chains and stuff like that. And one of the other ones that I remembered was, do you remember those, uh, I would get a bunch of these on Xbox Live back in the day, but those messages that people would send you and they would be like, Microsoft is deleting everybody's accounts and if yep. you don't forward this message to somebody else, then your account's going to get deleted. <laughs> yep. Oh, yeah. That I mean... To be fair, that's like the same essence of what Smile Dog is, just way yeah. less sinister. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, there was a ton of those chain emails. And honestly, like, I remember my mother and father getting those and being absolutely convinced, absolutely convinced that, like, oh shit, I better do this. Yeah. And like, I remember when they first started coming around, like, there was a little bit more credence to them. But after you've seen two or three of them, you're like, this is garbage. This is garbage. Yeah, it's it's kind of funny because like my uh, so my mom she used to be just the worst with technology and shit, and I can swear confirm. this woman has been scammed more times than I can count, and I'm just like, I swear to God, why yep. why are you the way you are? <laughs> <laughs> why? I hate so much about the things you choose. <laughs> <laughs> R.I.P. Many, but God damn it, that's just some. How many? Nigerian I just could not believe thug. it. Oh, she probably had at least four or five under her belt. It's like a Michael Scott <laughs> situation. Jesus. <laughs> nah, it definitely wasn't that bad. There was like, uh, I am sure one of those like tricked her, but uh, there was one that I remember that was like, uh, God, it it was something like, it was like a really simple one where like it was like your computer has a virus, please. Oh yeah. Call this number and talk oh, to us, and then those. they fucking basically got onto her computer and shit. But like, all she had was Hoyle Casino on there, so it was like, <laughs> didn't matter because she doesn't use a computer. Jokes on you, fuckers! I do all my accounting in my checkbook. <laughs> yeah, literally. Goddamn uh, boomer generation. <laughs> surprised they didn't get her to buy Google Play gift cards or something. Yeah. Oh, uh, she would have been like, nah, fuck you. I don't even know what that <laughs> is. That's too you much money. work. What's I'll, a Google I'll just, Play? I'll just delete my computer. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I don't give a fuck. Um, <laughs> well, speaking of things versus other things, if you go to patreon.com slash yes. the Ludi pod, you can find our SCP, the entirety of our SCP versus cryptid episodes that we've been putting out uh, for our March, March Monsters. Wow. Okay. Wow. Great. I won't spoil that uh, for anybody who wants to go check that out, but we're all wrapped up and you can figure out, you'll find out who the winner is Oh yeah. Uh, when you get there. And then you can also go to Diluti.com where you'll find links to all of our social media pages. You'll find links to our TikTok where we post regular TikToks about uh, different interesting things that we find on the internet. You can buy some merch there. Uh, oh, check yeah. out our merch. We got a merch store shipped to you in whatever shipping speed that you select on the checkout, which is a great option. <laughs> I was trying to make like a 30 minutes or less joke, but I couldn't figure out a way 
to <laughs> get that in there. Um, and then if you take some teeth out of a human being's face and you find a dog and you mm. shove each one of those teeth inside of that dog's mouth and then take a picture of it, you might become internet famous or you might send it to Mike. Or you and might, he just might go appreciate to jail. it, <laughs> or, pro- <laughs> or probably that. Um, that's the advice that I have to give today, Doug. What do you want to say to the people? Well, you see, let's let's throw back. Let, if you take a, a peen and a bean, <laughs> and it, they are happening to be uh, from two thousand nine to two thousand eleven. Okay. Cool. They could be creepy pasta. <laughs> they could be creepy pasta. And that's what and that that right there really really says a lot. It those were words can confirm. So keep that in mind. I think that honestly says everything that needs to be said about that. Jason, what do you have to say? I mean, first and foremost, stay paranoid. Don't be an idiot when it comes to creepy pictures. If you get a chain email that tells you to do something, absolutely follow those instructions to the letter. Otherwise, the thing that it says will happen will happen. I'm also lying. Please, for the love of God, don't fucking do that. Um, the other thing I do want to say is when this episode comes out, on our Patreon, we should have a, uh, a poll live. Um, it's going to help some people. If you are a member of the, uh, what was it, I think, five and up Patreon tier, you get to help pick our... N- well, not our next, but one of our episodes. We have an episode picked out. Our next out. heavy hitter, probably. Yeah, next heavy hitter. Um, I'm not 100% sure when it's going to be out. I do know that we still have the one that you guys picked the last time, although Mike is a selfish bitch, and he said he wanted to do it with us. So we're waiting for him. Um, because we love him. We do love him. Right. And we miss him very much, and we hope him and his child are doing wonderfully. Um, so when he comes back, you guys will get that. But when this comes out, please go to our Patreon if you are a patron. You can go ahead and vote right away. If you're not a patron, go ahead and sign up. Um, there's a ton of cool shit there. I mean, you're getting a tons, tons of bonus stuff. We're getting back to our regular scheduled programming. So like Matt, Matt said, we had SCP Cryptid. We're going back to our, uh, our SCP readings. Um, we got some bonuses. We're still working out what we're going to replace <laughs> Cryptid with. But again, that's probably going to happen after Mike comes back as well. So yeah, go if, check out if, the Patreon. If, if you are subscribed to Cryptid, uh, maybe maybe switch it yeah, to not, uh, SCP for now or something. Yeah, all one of you. Yeah, I would all, do that. All for one sure. of you. Who, yep. Yeah, that guy that we already shouted out. Oh, um, yeah. The other thing that you can do is you can leave us a voicemail, and Please. we'll play it at the end of the show. And you can leave that voicemail at six three zero nine zero nine nine three six six. I'm not gonna do it three times. Uh, that's Mike's thing. I've stolen all of Mike's things already the past two weeks. So I'm gonna let Doug that was so be ready. It. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and shove it, <laughs> and then turn that inside out. Wow. Yeah, that was a lot. Yeah. I, don't th- I don't think that needs to be repeated. No. <laughs> For me, I'll honest. edit that to make sense. <laughs> um, <laughs> and we're gonna play one of those now. Welcome back to Inner Night. Your presence and cooperation is much appreciated. To start the night, repeat after me. There is no grand master plan. I can control my destiny. I can relinquish control as I please. My self-worth is just as important as the kindness I spread. Repeat that as many times as you need this week. Now, we have a message in a bottle from another member of Inner Night. Alex says, I don't know if you read these, but my husband disappeared last week and I need to cancel whatever this is. Please stop calling. We hope they sparked some confidence in you. Your lucky numbers for this week are 67, 104, 97, 108, 108, 116, 32, 71, 101, 112, 111, 116, 32, 105, 115, 32, 115, 109, 105, 108, 105, 110, 103, 32, 
117, 112, 111, 110, 32, 117, 115, 32. The sky is lovely tonight. Maybe go look at the stars for a while. See what the stars have to say to you. And remember to meditate frequently at the same time each day to increase synchronicity. This concludes this week's message from Inner Night. Don't forget to send a message for another member to hear you. We will visit you again next week. Good night.